Hi, this is Bob again, as usual. <laughs> but uh, what I'm going to show you here on this February 10th, 2013, is is a real Rube Goldberg contraption <laughs> I built. I was just playing around with the what it's called. It's a variation. It's my own uh, design of a Bennett Bennett's doubler, and uh, the gentleman first put this together back in 1887. Now, this is what he had. You can see that. I don't get caught up in the wires. And uh, I got this, uh, all this information off the internet. And uh, a gentleman down in Brazil has this website on electrostatics m machines, early ones, from the earliest to the, they're all up to, from friction machines to the doublers and influence machines to the most modern ones still in use today. It's a good website. I really recommend that you uh, go to it if you uh, can't find it. Uh, Really, just punch in on search, just punch in uh, electrostatic machines, and I'm sure you'll find it. Yeah, but it's very good, and I really enjoyed it. I learned a lot, and he does an excellent job of explaining how everything works. And, and what I like, he gives a lot of history. Now, he builds them himself, he builds replications of most of the devices. Because here, here, well, on this page, you'll see that this is his replication of the Bennett Doubler. Now, later on, a, uh, a man by the name of uh, Nicholson, he built, a, and it's also a doubler, but it was a rotating one. This, the, the one that you that you see here in this print, what you have is, uh, what you've got is... You got a moving plate. There's three plates. You've got a positive. This is, uh, you got three plates, A, B, and C. C is uh, positive, A is positive, and B is negative. And the, the secret to this thing, and moving, is that plate B can move. And it moves between A and C. As you can see, I hope you can see this in the illustration. And when you make the process, you start out with B grounded, and C is connected to A. And then when you move it, B is not grounded. The ground is broken, it's just free, and C is grounded. And you bring B back down to A, and you have doubled the charge. That's why they call it a doubler. Now, it's a this, this, this tricky part if because mine is mechanical I'll show you how I I did it without <coughs> with with uh, with the uh, this machine or contraption if you want to call it that I built and here's the basic components now I've got it hooked to my little uh, this is just for demonstration, this is a capacitor with hooked to a, a, a electroscope. Now, the base is a metal, and it is the ground system. There is no, I don't earth ground it. You can, but you don't need to. And this area here is the switching. Now, there's eight terminals on here, but I'm only using six. And what, how the switch is working? I've got it in a new. It's got a neutral when I'm not using it, and then I can unlock it, and it goes up to the. There's spring loaded, in the center shaft right there, that you might be able. I hope you can see, and you have to man, manually come down 
and the con you get your contacts when you push down you get one uh, two switches on top you get two switches and each switch has two contacts and there's this wire actually goes through and makes contact and this <laughs> the tricky part is wiring it up correctly now in along with that now this is the actual doubler uh, let me uh, move the camera up and I explain that this is plate B as you is in the illustration it's just made out of plastic jars and I have it wired in down to the switching and then on the top this is in this case I've reversed it this is a and this is C and what you need to do with C is it is when when I place this is just like a piston but these these are plates this is a plate ring this is a plate ring and this is a plate ring a this is actually how this goes is a B C and I have it set up so it drops over the center there's a center shaft for the switching and now when the switch is up plate A and B are together and when you go down the switching takes effect and now A and C, or B and C are brought together and B is separated from A and through the switching I have C is now grounded and B is not grounded but when it's up B is grounded and A A is the uh, is wired through and to the capacitor and the electroscope now they say it need to start it with a small charge but I have not had a problem this thing it seems it, it well we're at very low humidity and uh, I believe I believe now I haven't run this thing for a couple days I think it'll it'll charge itself it it takes a few pumps and I'm going to sh bring the camera see how it works I just take my hand and I push down and it has a spring return and it pops up and makes contact and when you hold it down now I'm going to uh, I'm going to move the camera in whoa and away we went huh anyways I want you to see I want to try and charge it up so it because this is set up just like I did on the uh, capacitor has a uh, uh, this is a little grounding wire, just about uh, oh, three si uh, sixteenth or less off the top terminal, because it takes a lot. Well, I'll explain that later. And then it's wired over to this is the hot wire uh, from the A, and it, you can see that it's wired over to the capacitor. And then I have a jumper over to the electroscope. And now I'm going to see if I can pump that up and produce a spark. Now, because the ring, these are, I call them ring plate capacitors, are so small that it doesn't, it's not a huge ch charge in any cycle. And it may take a minute or two. I should have, I can, I can put an initial charge in it. That is not an, an I'll see if I can get it going. There, it's starting to work. I hope you can see that. I'm sure you can see that. You see how the leaf at each pump, full cycle, down and up, that the leaf, you see how it jumps out, comes back. See, that's now A is, for, you see, A is not grounded or anything, and it's holding a charge, and then B comes back up. Now, it's going to, leaf is going to drop back a little bit because of the action of a capacitor. The capacitor increases. Capacitance increases. Now the capacitance decreases and you see the charge going into the leaf. And you can you just keep pumping. And as you can see the leaf is gaining, slowly gaining. 
and away it's going. Now, I may not, it takes, <laughs> it takes about 40 to 60 pumps to get it to arc over that short gap. And I, uh, uh, because of the time here, because I'm already into 10 minutes here, so I'm going to, uh, I'm going to let the leaf touch the edge and then I'm going to show, I'll just push it, the ground over and let it discharge. But you can see that it will produce a spark. I believe the camera will pick that up. See how it's pumping? See how it's jumping each time? And away it goes. There, it's touching the edge. And now we have a charge. Now let's see if we can, what happens when we discharge it. Boom. I know if you didn't see it, you heard it, I hope. Well, that's how that works. It's, it's, it's really, a, this is a Bennett doubler, and I just made it out of a plastic jars, and it's, a, it's got its own system. There's no external ground, and it works just fine. Now, once you've done that, because it sat for a couple of days, and I used the it takes a, see, it's not a big charge each time, but you can see now that there's more charge, residual charge left in it there how much quicker the, uh, the leaf is uh, is repelling the stationary leaf on my little electroscope. And at the same time, it's building up the charge in the capacitor, or the light and jar, if you prefer to use that term. But there it is. And you can see that it just, and it takes about almost 30 to 40 pumps Depending on the humidity, these like all this sort of electrostatic, and I've said it many times before in other videos that it takes humidity affects all of this. We're real dry, so this is working pretty good. Anyhow, there you go. See, and then all I have to do is I bring the terminal bang. It's it's about a three millimeter gap that it discharges at. Well, okay, I wanted to show you that, and uh, if you go to that website or uh, and study how to build it, you can make a, this kind of a Rube Goldberg, but I just wanted to see if I could do it. It's a type of generator, electric generator. It's it's very crude and simple, and uh, you can have a lot of fun with it. But on the other video where I was charging the electroscope and, and the... Uh, capacitor with the uh, electrofluorus, you can see that the electrofluorus, of course, being a bigger area, stronger unit. All right, I just wanted to show you all that, and uh, I, I hope you can have some fun with it. Take care. Bye.